Uh, my name is Karen Oltis. I'm the Career Counselor and Associate Director at the Center for Career and Calling. I'm glad you are all here today because you get to meet a former student of mine. Um, Philip was in my class, which was called Discover Your Career and Calling. It's called something else now that I can't. Uh, how do you what's your class called? Which your class called? Oh, Transition from College to Career. Transition from College to Career is what it's now called. But eight years ago, um, he has since graduated with a degree in business uh, administration and has done all kinds of creative, wonderful things. Um, I am the proud owner of not only one of his first CDs, but an autographed copy of his first book. And uh, he has some copies available to purchase at the end of his presentation today. So please help me welcome Philip Sharp Skills Jacob. How you guys doing today? Good. good, good, good to see you. Glad that you made it out. And um, hopefully I don't trip on stage or do anything silly, but if I do, just laugh along and we'll have a good time. Is that okay? <laughs> so um, I'm really glad that you guys came out today. I think this is a very important topic. I mean, how to be who you're meant to be. Like that's like um, the Mount Rushmore of human existence, right? Like, I mean, that's the question we're always asking ourselves. What's my purpose? What am I here for? And so for you guys being here today, I mean, that really says a lot about what you're thinking about and kind of where you're at in this phase in your life. So hopefully today um, you'll get something that I might not tell you who you are. You know, I don't know if that's my job description today, but maybe what I can do is I can maybe give you a, another way or another lens of looking at that and some tools that'll help you along the way. There's a pointer. So this is what I hope to do with you guys today and for you is I hope to challenge you. Like I said, I hope to um, perhaps give you a different way of looking at going about how you view your calling and your career as well as your major and what role that plays in your overall ultimate purpose. And then also I want to equip you today. Hopefully today you leave with some tools that are going to help you along the way um, in your journey, whether that's in your career, you know, whether that's you continuing to, to be a student here, or just um, you know, something that you might not even use. Maybe it, it might be five years down the road and you reach back and you remember something that you got from today. And then lastly, I wanna motivate you because I feel like it, it's so important because you can get all the information in the world, but if you're not motivated and stimulated to take action, then it really doesn't mean anything. So this is what our discussion is going to center around. And I should ask, can you guys hear me OK? I'm kind of taking it as I don't need the mic, but OK, you guys hear me in the back? Cool, perfect. So our discussion is going to center around understanding your career, or I'm sorry, understanding your calling and identity, uh, the different chasms you will face in pursuit of calling identity. And when I mean what I, when I say by chasm, I mean we're all intelligent in here. We know what a chasm is. But really, what I'm referring to is just a gap. Maybe it's an internal gap or it's um, where you are today as opposed to where you want to be at tomorrow. And how do we bridge that gap? So we're going to talk about uh, the, the three major chasms that most of us in our, in our lifetime will find ourselves in. And then we're going to talk about linking your major and career with your calling. I mean, that's, that's huge. So how do you take what you're learning today and even your career and how does that play the, you know, the, the role in what you're eventually ultimately going to become? And then I'm, at, the, at the end, I'm going to give you guys just a few golden nuggets that have helped me along the way. And, uh, you know, just uh, knowledge that you might not even necessarily always get in school, but just some of the, the life lessons that I've, I've gotten from um, my own trial and error, um, as well as people that I know that are, you know, successful in their, um, in their relative spheres. And um, I'm going give, to give you guys some of that as a bonus today. All right. So... Karen kind of mentioned it, but I am a hip hop artist. Like that's like probably the the core. Um, that's that's what I started doing. I started doing music when I was 10 years old. Um, started rapping when I was 10 years old, and I come from a musical background. And I mean, even just from writing a book, that all came from me starting with music. Um, last year, I started this little series called Sharp Got Bars. That's the hashtag. And what I would do is I would write a rhyme, a verse every other week, and I would post it on YouTube. And, um, you know, I would like to do something for you guys today, if that's all right. Yeah. Kind of break the ice. Can I, can I spit a bar? When I say spit, it's just a hip hop term for <laughs> rap. But you guys, you guys are pretty hip, so I don't feel like I got to explain that too much. 
1984, heaven dropped the seed. Knew I was God's child, mama made me believe. Anything I put my mind to, I could achieve. One foot in the church and one foot in the streets. Seen many things while pursuing my vision. Some homies fell through the cracks, some glued to the system. Some got baby mamas with mouths chewing against them. I'm not trying to diss them, I'm just moving in wisdom. I'm just a young man beating the odds. Plenty of war wounds, plenty of scars, plus physical and emotional pain. Been mentally fatigued, but I stayed in the game. Not to mention broken friendships, unfulfilled promises. But because of this, I know where the knowledge is. I acknowledge this. Rebel, this is not a fib. You can't get these type of smarts in no colleges. I thank God that I, I finally found my rib. Wifey got my back and she proud to crown the kid. We are soulmates who I climb this mountain with. And with only a seed, that same mountain lifts. Ain't no doubt in this, a real man that counts the risk. Even though sometimes life will make you pound your fists. Make you want to drown it out and go down a fifth. Maybe roll a blunt just to get up out of this. But I've come too far to use them band-aids. Pick up my cross and go the man's way. Building up the type of strength that you can't sway. I'm seasoned by seasons for the right taste. And my mind frames to get up out this rat race. Get up out this one room to a fat place. I waste no time, I move at a cat's pace. I'm busy walking my rhymes, keeping the raps laced. I can't get with the skinny jeans spitting, even though I got skinny jeans on. <laughs> Anybody can hear, but only kings listen. To this industry, I know I bring tension. I'm not a fake thug and my butt ain't switching. I'm a real rebel, my cause is God-given. My life's documented, the days are all written. What they call freedom is what I call prison. Ahead of the curve, I learned there's no ditching. The Royal Nolan Ryan, a rap, I'm going to pitch it. I'm grandma's grits in the morning and hot biscuits. I'm addressing this to all of my misfits. I'm connected with y'all no matter the distance from Compton to Paris, Kenya to the Caymans, ours to the sky, play hard to the gamins, whatever your lane is, just don't be complacent. The position you play, there's no replacement. Life is hard, we all gotta face this. The strong survive and teach the weak how. God bless the kid who is a meek child. Let me lend you some strength, head to the peak now. Is that all right, y'all? <laughs> My man snapping right here, cool. He's in tune with me. Awesome, so now that we broke the ice, um, we can go ahead and move on with our discussion. So at least if the presentation sucked, at least you got a cool rap. <laughs> So there's some essentials that you need and that you already possess in order to know who you're meant to be. And this picture right here is um, of, of, of climbing equipment. You know, whenever, I don't know how many of you guys hike or climb in here. Um, I don't, you know, um, but if that's what you do, more power to you. That's, that's awesome. But this picture here was just when I was thinking about this presentation, I was like, so becoming who we are, that's such a big, that's such a big feat, like, you know, for somebody to really know who they're meant to be, you know, but the essentials, we already possess those. What are your unique passions? You know, what fires you up? What motivates you? What's your fuel? You know, um, there's an awesome TED talk. Some of you guys may have already seen it or heard of uh, Simon Sinek. He wrote a book called Start With Why. And he talks about the, the importance of your why and knowing like that's that's the beginning of everything before you actually do something and, and how you go about doing it is knowing what your why is. So what are you passionate about? What fires you up? That's a, a key indicator of who you're meant to be. And then what are your talents and your gifts? Like, I mean, what are you what are you skillful at? You know, what do you do naturally that people compliment you on? I mean, it could be something like the way you put your outfits together, you know, um, the, the, the way that you're just able to crunch numbers like out of, out of this world. You know, the way that you do social media or writing or whatever, whatever it is, um, maybe you're a good listener. But what are your talents and your skiffs in your gifts? I made a new word, skiffs. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> And that's going to be another essential part of knowing who you're meant to be. And then lastly, what is your vision? 
this is huge because this campus would not exist if it were not for a visionary, if it was not for somebody to say, I think that this building could look like this. You know, we look at a, a company like Apple Computer. There was a, a, you know, maybe you guys have heard of Steve Jobs before. I don't know, he's kind of a big deal. But, you know, he had a vision for this, for this company. And, and, and there's a vision for building airplanes and, and, and for all of these, uh, these, these major movements that we see throughout the globe. So what is your vision, you know? Um, and you may not even have a, a clear perspective of that right now. But in due time, you're going to begin, if you're intentional, you're going to begin to find kind of, you know, what you can see that other people can't see. And I'm a, this is kind of a, just a side note. A lot of times, because your vision resides in you, other, don't, don't get mad when other people don't necessarily embrace it the same way that you do, you know? It's like everybody can be happy for a, a, a pregnant mother, but she's the one carrying that baby, and she's the one who wants to push it out, you know? I got two kids, so I can attest. So, <laughs> so those are your three essentials right there. Now, calling. See, he's got his ears up. You guys get it. This side got it. Uh, <laughs> so we are constantly being called by one thing or another, and the goal is to answer the right call as many times as we can throughout our lifetime. I'm going to go on a wild hunch, and I'm going to assume probably like most of you guys in here are Christian, or at least you lied about it on your application so you can get in here. I don't know if they still do that, but I remember when I first came here, like you had to put like, yeah, I'm, I follow Christ, you know, this and that. But in, in our faith tradition, calling is kind of one of those buzzwords where we hear it and it's kind of like, yeah, I'm called to this or I'm called to do that. You know, I'm called to, um, you know, feed the homeless or I'm called to, um, you know, I don't know, take care of kids or something like that. But really, when you think about it, calling at its most basic form is when somebody calls your name or, or at, at, on, on a, a, more, um, a more, even more basic level than that. If the president of this university was to call you by name, wait, what's your name right here, ma'am? Tao. What if the president of SPU was to call you, Tao, and say, hey, I got a special assignment for you. How would you feel about that? feel pretty like good right legit really and that that's that's really what a calling is and so in our faith tradition calling generally and and more times the the game changing call in our life is the call from God the call that we get in terms of where God knows us specifically calls us by name and has a specific thing for us to do and even more than has a specific thing for us to do but something to become so that's what calling is. It's, it's that, that, that wooing, like, you know, I, I, I called you for a specific purpose and I called you to be something. Now, whether you become that or not, a lot of that has to do with you and your, your attitude towards your calling and going throughout life. You know what? I want to go back here. There's a couple things because I don't have my notes. Um, they got, we had a little technical uh, thing, but another thing about calling is that I forgot to mention is you guys have probably heard the the statement or the scripture that says many are called few are chosen right um and sometimes that I mean when I first heard that it, it kind of sounded kind of messed up because it's like you know you it kind of sounds like favoritism like why is everybody called but everybody only a few are chosen like you know I want to be chosen you know why can't I be chosen but really what it is is everybody's called Everybody's called. Everybody in here has a calling on their life. There's a specific, uh, you're supposed to become something. You're supposed to do something specifically. But there are some people that either they just, they decide to go a totally different route with their life and they just say, you know what, I'm not going to listen to that call. I don't want to hear that. Sorry, I can't hear you. Click, hang up. But then there's other people that answer the call for a season, but because of the hardships that comes with calling, they invariably fall away from the calling. And the, the thing about a calling from God is it's, it's an honor to be called by God. It's an honor to be called by the president of, of, this, of, this, um, of this school, you know. But it's hard. It's hard to stick to it through all the adversity that it brings in just life and even success. Success will test you just as much as adversity will. Because what happens with success is you begin, you know, you begin to drink your own Kool-Aid. You start feeling yourself. You get the big head. And then nobody can tell you anything. And then before you know it, you know, pride become, comes before fall. And but then the, on the other side of that, you go through adversity. I mean, let's look at the life, life of Christ. Um, he was sitting in um, 
in the Gospels, it talks about he was he was uh, he was getting baptized by John the Baptist in this big, beautiful scene of God in an audible voice. You are my son. I love you. You know, um, uh, you know, he, he said, I, I am well pleased with you. Right. And other people could hear it. It's crazy. Like, wow, like I'm really special. I'm really somebody, you know, for God to take the time to say that. So everybody could hear it. That's major. It's not me just in the shower thinking it to myself. <laughs> and then after that, he's driven into the wilderness for 40 days and for 40 days, he can't eat anything. And then he's got to deal with this guy called the devil who keeps messing with him and keeps tempting him, putting, uh, stones in his face, telling him to turn it to bread and trying to get him to do magic tricks and stuff like that, making him upset, you know, different things like that. Why would you in one sentence say that I am, uh, you know, uh, beloved of God and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, that you're well pleased with me and then you drive me into this wilderness? What's up with that? Well, that's how calling works usually. You have to go through some testing. You have to go through some fire before you become who you're meant to be. Because once you get into the place that you are and, and you become who you are, then then there's other lives that are attached to you. Then there comes responsibility. And in order for you to handle that properly, there has to be the, the right character that has only been forged through the crucible of affliction. And I'm not trying to paint a morbid picture. I'm just being real with you guys that these are things that you have to go through if you want to actually be, um, you know, your best self if you want to really be who you're meant to be. And a lot of people don't, they don't make it. And that's why few are chosen. Does that make sense? All right. So let's talk about chasms. I want to ask you guys a question. You see my man right here on the, on the dirt bike. I don't know if he made it. Hopefully he made it. Um, but either way, he found a way, you know, he got it in his head saying, if I use this, maybe this will get me across. But there's three chasms. And I want to ask you guys, um, I, I just kind of want to see where you're at. So the first chasm that I'm going to talk about and I want to know where you're at is you don't exactly know what your purpose is and you're trying to figure it out. How many of you would say that? OK, good. About all right, about 15 of you guys. Cool. Now, the next chasm is you you know or you have an idea of what your purpose is but you just don't know how to become that or you know you know what your calling is you just don't know how to become that how many of you guys would say you're there okay so about okay that's pr pretty accurate assessment of what i thought now the third chasm is you're already in your purpose you're already in your calling but now you're just trying to figure out how do i maintain this like how do i steer this ship how many of you guys would say that you're there okay all right Cool. So I'm going to address all of those um, with, with this statement. I just kind of wanted to know where you guys were at. So chasm one, not knowing your purpose. So remember I told you guys that I was going to give you some tools to help you kind of get across that chasm. The first one, and I, I really hope that I can remember all of them because I had all my notes. Um, so you guys pray for me that I can remember them. But I, for, for without a doubt, the first chasm or the first way to cross this chasm is just knowing that you have a purpose. Basic. Uh, Vince Lombardi, this is a football, you know, like know that you have a purpose. Even if you don't know what it is yet, even if you don't know what your calling is yet, just the, the, the basic um, knowledge and that foundation is going to do so much for you as you begin to discover and as it becomes uncovered. You, you would be surprised. I mean, a lot of you guys are blessed to be at SPU and the families that you come from, but a lot of people don't even think they have a purpose. They're just wandering around aimlessly. So just know that you have a purpose. That's number one. Number two is do things that, that challenge you. Like put yourself in situations that cause you to see within yourself. And I'm, I'm not saying like, you know, go out and, you know, um, just, you know, uh, I don't know, go to the harshest place of Africa and say, you know, I'm here to preach the gospel and it's a bunch of people that might kill you. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is do even little things or step up to the plate and become a leader or step up for an assignment that other people won't do so that as you stretch and as you do things that are outside of your comfort zone and other than what you would normally do outside of your status quo, that's going to cause you to give you a glimpse of like who you really are. You know, so kind of put yourself in, in those positions and 
as you get that knowledge, that's going to help you begin to piece together. OK, I'm, I, I think, you know, I have an a, a idea of what I might be called to do and who I might be called to be. The next one is just be patient with your process. And that's hard, you know, and especially, you know, our generation, um, you know, everything is instant. You know, uh, people is seem seemingly become millionaires overnight, billionaires overnight, you know, uh, you know, uh, successful, married with kids like, you know, within six months. And it's like, how do you have kids in six months? You know, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's, it's like be patient with your process. And I, I guess um, the way that you do that is if you set set goals for yourself, attainable goals, you know, like this year, this is something that I want to learn about or this is something that I want to improve, improve in, you know, whatever, whatever you have to do that, you know, because for me, I'm a type A personality. I'm very achievement, accomplishment driven. So I, I have to do something so my ADD, you know, won't uh, make me go crazy. But um, just be patient with yourself and understand that in due time, in due time, everything's going to be OK. You have a calling. You are called to be something. And you're going to discover that in due time. And I know I have one more point, And maybe it'll come back to me. But we'll go to chasm two. So knowing your purpose, but not how to get there. Some of you guys, uh, a lot of you guys raised your hand on this one. So this picture really exemplifies this because you see my man got on the fresh Armani suit, you know, but he's out in the grasslands somewhere and he's got his map up like, no, nah, this, this, this isn't right, you know, turning the map upside down and stuff. And I feel like a lot of us, this is probably we're gonna, where we're going to spend like the majority of our, of our life, you know, um, is, is, knowing that you have a purpose, but it's like, man, I got this billion dollar idea. Like you might have the next Facebook, you know, in, in your head, you might have, you know, the, the cure for, you know, cancer, you know, I think it already exists, but, um, you, you might have these ideas and different things in, in, a, in, in the way that you see yourself, but you just don't know how to implement that. And I really think that that's, you know, going to kind of be a, a recurring theme throughout your life. And that's okay. So the first thing I'm going to say, um, and it goes back to the first chasm is be patient with your process, knowing that in due time, as you continue to take the steps and as you just continue to live life and be intentional, that who you are meant to be is going to be revealed to you in layers. Some things just take time. And that's, you know, that's just the hard truth about it. Some things just take time. Um, you know, even I, I can I consider myself a leader. But I know that to be the leader that I want to be, it's just there's just some things that are going to come with some gray hair and some age, you know. So um, that's one thing to to remember. Um, I'm trying to I'm mentally looking at my notes, so. So the next thing is when you don't know your purpose or when you know your purpose but not how to get there, another important thing, and this is basic as well, is surrounding yourself with mentors. Surrounding yourself with people that are a reflection of where you want to be at. You know, this is basic stuff, right? But the scripture says that he who walks with the wise grows wise. So that's important. And you would you would uh, I mean, I, I kid you not. You would be surprised at the levels that your life would go if you are intentional, intentional about building relationships with people that are in a place that you you see yourself like you might see, um, you know, I, I, I don't I don't know what you know what you see yourself as. But if, even if you reach out to certain people and you say, you know what, I want to be like you when I grow up, you know, people will take you under their wing just because you acknowledge that they're doing something um, that that you want to emulate. So surround yourself with mentors. That's that's an important thing. Um, do what you already know to do. How many of you guys are like me where um, before I'm finished with one idea, I'm already on to the next three. I don't know if you guys are like that. You know, I just. Um, when I get an idea, I want to rip and run. But 
what what I'm even being brought to being brought back to is you have to you have to just do the basic stuff. You know, put your pants leg pant, pant legs on one at a time before you try to fly. You know, and as you do that, as you master the basics of life, as you uh, complete you know your your different tasks and assignments and do it in excellence. That's important. Doing it in excellence, becoming a master at the basics, then that's what's going to open you up to the bigger and better things that you see. And then once you, it, it should always be like that. It should be like, you know, uh, always escalating. So once you master this basic level, then you get to this level, you struggle there, and then you master that, and then you move to the next level. And that's typically how it goes. Gosh, I have so many notes on this. Um, what, do you guys have any, like, questions about this? Because maybe that'll even help trigger something. Is there anything that's just sticking out to you or, or a comment or something like that? Anybody brave enough? Yes. How did you read setbacks? How did I? How, how do you handle you know, in this thing? You know where you want to go, but you don't know how to get there. And you try something, and then then it doesn't work, or you don't get the response that you think you wanted, or you don't get that job. What advice would you have for me on that about that? The brilliant Mrs. Lane. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody's praying for me because she came to class. This is this is one of my this is this is one of the notes is perseverance is key. I read a lot about success. Well, I mean, in my my definition of success um, or, you know, sometimes. But, you know, people that have, you know, become titans in their industry or people that are just captains at what they do. And the number one trait that I've, I've seen across all of those different people is persistence, because we're going to fail. Like you're going to, you know, I don't know why as a culture, we're so afraid of failure. It's not that you are a failure, but it's, it's that you continue trying something and you just learn that that wasn't the right way. So persevering and persistence is the key. Once you go through those setbacks um, of, you know, you tried something, maybe you, uh, you, you, you thought, Hmm, man, there's so many different places I want to go, but time, um, you tried something, you were in a relationship, uh, you try to diet. I don't know. You um, you you tried to get a you know a certification, you, a, a class that you didn't pass. But you failing a class does not mean that you're not going to get your degree. You know. So that's the important thing is keeping your your vision in front of you of who you are and what your calling is, and persisting until you get that thing, come hell or high water. So that's another point. Any other? That was good. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, you talk about the importance of surrounding yourself with mentors. Yes. Um, in the search for career and calling, one thing we would talk about is the importance of informational interviewing, mm -hmm. which is kind of mentors light. Yeah. Um, you're not really, you know what I mean? So I'm wondering if that, you to, how, what role do you see that might play? Yeah, most definitely. I think Karen is the master of that because when I, when I was at SPU, I mean, that's what she drove home all day was informational interviews. So again, it's even if you might not necessarily even get a mentor because people are busy. You know, Bill Gates might not be able to sit down and, you know, uh, play, uh, you know, play Foursquare with you. I don't know. But you might be able to get an informational interview just saying, I just need five minutes of your time. And that five minutes will change your life because that person or those people or that group is in a place where I remember somebody told me it was a, um, a, a, a fairly successful guy. And he said, what some people would take some people hours to discuss, I can come in as the leader and change in a five minute conversation. So when you get to the people that are kind of like, you know, the higher ups and, and they have information and knowledge that, you know, we just don't readily see. And something that you're struggling with in an informational interview or whatever can be the next key to unlock what you, you know, what you want to do. Anybody else? That was, that was, this is awesome. I like this format. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking about something like, so there are some short-term kind of goals to get to your, your kind of vision. There's some kind of long-term goals. And I'm thinking of kind of, so in my case, it's kind of like a purpose that is not just like doing one specific thing, it's like a combination of things. Yeah. I imagine that other people share that. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm wondering, do you have any, you know, any associations about that? Um, have you heard of Daniel Pink? He wrote a book called A Whole New Mind, and I recommend that you get that book because he talks about in that book how um, the way that society is moving. Let's just face it. A lot of our jobs and different things that, you know, we kind of take for granted are moving overseas. 
And the reason why is because labor is cheaper there, right? I mean, but you even have some like healthcare stuff that's going over there, some legal stuff. So he says in his book that people that can utilize both the, the left and the right brain, you know, so to speak, um, using that combination of art as well as, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, our more logical side, those are the people that are really going to be able to succeed in this new age. So what made me think of that as you asked that question is, I really think that that is, in this day and time, having a unique combination is, what, is what's going to set you apart. And that's going to be, um, I think, a big part of, part of the puzzle that shows you who you are. And the thing, um, I don't want to get all in your business, but I feel like, I mean, just with that question alone, it's, it's not an easy road when you're like that because so many people are black and white, you know, or they're, I mean, not, you know, literally, but uh, a lot, I mean, we are, right? Um, but a lot of people see just black and white, whereas you see red, you see yellow, you see like, man, all the different combinations and stuff. And the thing is just embrace that about yourself because a lot of people, unfortunately, not all the time will. So just keep that in your mind, like that's going to be a big part of your identity and that's what is going to set you apart and that's where you're going to shine at. But you're going to have to be comfortable being different because people just, we, we are by nature, we go with the herd, you know? And so people that kind of stray a, a, a little bit from that, you know, sometimes it, 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 it's a weird feeling. But if you can get comfortable being uncomfortable, then you're, you're going to be, you're going to do awesome things with that with that mindset. Did that kind of answer a little bit? If nothing else, read Daniel Pink's book. Yeah, I think that'll be great. Um, I'm gonna move to the next chasm for the sake of time. So chasm three, operating in your purpose um, and sustaining the right character and perspective through, this is one of the chasms I asked you guys about. Um, so you're operating in your purpose, but now you're trying to sustain, um, you're, you're trying to sustain that, like you're trying to stay in your purpose, you know? Um, it might be some difficulty that you're experiencing, uh, some life transition that you're experiencing, but you're like, how do I, how do I stay in that, in that place? So with this one, this boils down to two things, your perspective and your character. So perspective, that's your outlook. That's the way that you see things, right? But your perspective also determines your character. Because if you see things like, you know, like today, it's raining outside. So one person is like, yay, it's raining, good. You know, like, I, you know, I can go outside and I can, you know, my plants are getting water. That's awesome. Another person is like, it's so dark and gray outside. I hate life, you know. Um, and that has a major impact on their character. Because if you continue to think like that, you know, long enough, eventually that's what you're gonna become and that's how your brain chemistry is gonna work. So perspective and character are huge. So for those people that are already in their purpose and you wanna sustain that, you wanna stay, you wanna to continue to be who you are. One thing is understanding that the trial or even the success that you're going through is, is actually building your character. Like if you can stay, it doesn't feel like it. Like if somebody comes by you and just slaps you every day, I don't recommend you allow anybody to do that. I'm just using that as an example. If somebody keeps coming by you and just slapping you or something like that, but you know that it's getting your, you know, your face stronger. A better example is when you go to the gym. <laughs> Where do I come up with this stuff? Um, <laughs> um, somebody's praying for me. All right, so you're in the gym, right? And you hitting those weights, you know, my, my guys, you know, we in there getting our chest right, you know, because it's about to be summer, so I'm getting my chest right. And trying to get a girlfriend, you know, get a wife, whatever. So you in there getting your chest right, but while you're doing it, it hurts, you know what I'm saying? Like you feeling the pain, you feeling it all in your, you know, your, your uh, these are your deltoids, right? How many, um, you know, anyway, never mind. Um, <laughs> you're, feeling the, you're feeling the pain. So it doesn't feel like you're getting stronger. Um, you know, but you are like what, what's happening is as your as your body is breaking down, it's actually going to become stronger the next time you go to the gym. You guys know that. So it's the same thing when you're going through adversity. Staying in position is just, you know, the word the word of God even says to when you've done everything to stand, you stand like you stay in position. Don't move no matter what it looks like. You be that 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 pillar for, you know, for, of, of being who you're called to be. So that's one thing that it's building your character. The next thing is your perspective. I talk about this in the book a little bit. I talk about what database do you live from because we all operate according to a database or an operating system similar to our phones and computers and different things like that. 
the operating system that you have is your unique experiences, your background and the information that you're consistently feeding yourself on a regular basis. So it's how, what information are you feeding yourself on a regular basis? What is your environment telling you on a regular basis? What are you putting into yourself? Even the music that you listen to, the books that you read, the things that you watch on TV, all of that stuff is feeding you information. And if you're not careful, if you, keep, if you put the wrong stuff inside of you, that's what's gonna shape your perspective ultimately. And so you wanna be feeding yourself stuff that is in line with who you're meant to be. If you're called to be, I'm gonna just use an example, a pastor, you need to be listening to the top leaders. You need to be listening to people that have been in their calling for 40 plus years. If you wanna get married, you need to listen or surround yourself with married people that have been married 20, 30 years. You need to feed yourself the information that is gonna enable you to thrive in the place that you currently are. And that's, that's, that's critical, you know? Um, because if you're listening to you know, you're trying to stay married, but you're talking about, you know, all oh, the single ladies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that might not help you, you know what I mean, down the road. That's an old song. I could have did better than that. <laughs> but um, so that's, that's the biggest thing is operating in your, your purpose, sustaining the right character and perspective. It's your perspective works with your character. Your character works with your perspective. And it's not easy. It's not easy because it, it, it even goes back to um, many are, are called, but few are chosen. So the fact that you're standing in position still, despite whatever adversity or success that you've had, and you're still in place, that, that speaks volumes. I would even say that's probably one of the greater definitions of who you are. I'm a husband now. I've been married um, it's seven years. Um, we just celebrated our seventh anniversary, um, December 31st. And marriage ain't easy, y'all. I know some of y'all, y'all ready, like, you know, the girl's like, I can't wait till he proposed to me. It's been too long. The, the guys, you know, um, you know, and, and we, we, we want to do that. But marriage is not easy. It's beautiful. But the fact that even through trials and tribulations of being pretty much you have to become somebody Siamese twin, pretty much, you know, where they, you know, you got to have them move their arms so you can get the remote, you know, different things like that. <laughs> Ultimately, that's what it becomes. <laughs> you know, that's not easy. But when you stand the test of time, like my grandparents, they were married before they passed away. They were married um, for 60 plus years. That's that's calling. You know, that's who you are. Like after that's what you are defined by when you've been standing in position, doing what you've been doing on a consistent basis through the highs, the ups and downs of life. That's who you are. And so that's um, that's a big part of just the chasm is just. Stay in a position. The other thing is your perspective, <coughs> feeding yourself the right information. And at this level, it actually becomes, it becomes a practice because you're not always going to feel like doing it. When you get to this place, when you're doing what you're called to do, when, you're, when you really are who you're called to be, what about when you, you are married and your wife gets sick and you have to take care of her, God forbid, or your husband gets sick? What about when you have to deliver a message and your son, you know, your, your kids are acting up in school? What about when it's finals week and you get a flat tire and you spill coffee on yourself and you just don't feel like going because you know you didn't really study as good as you wanted to and didn't get much sleep. But, you know, in order to graduate, you got to do this final and, and pass it. That's that's definition right there. The people that can stick it out, hold out. And, and another thing, um, I know I'm talking too much, we would go over time, but um, there's high statistics of many people that don't even, they get to like the last quarter of college and they don't even do it. Like they don't even graduate. It's crazy. You know, I don't know what the statistics are, but I hear about people all the time, like they're six credits away from graduating and they don't, you know? So finish, finish what you start. Um, this is actually an ongoing conversation. Um, how, how are we doing on time? How many of you guys got classes you got to be to like within like the next 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Okay. So let's get to the golden nugget so we can get you guys out. Linking your major and career with your calling. This is, this is kind of like, you know, the, the, the premise of our, our discussion today. So the knowledge you gain while in your major is what gives you a worldview and a palette of tools. So what you guys are getting while you're at SPU is it's giving you, you know, pretty much your utility belt to take out into the world amongst other things. Um, but 
it's a, it's a starting point. Don't think just because you get a degree you've arrived, even if you get a master's and a doctorate. You have to have applied knowledge with the knowledge that you get because that's the only way it turns into wisdom and that's the only way it turns into power is by using the things that you've gotten on a regular basis. And then your career gives you a platform to discover and express your calling. You notice that I didn't say that career is calling. I think that career gives voice to your calling. But like, for, for example, for me, I'm a, I'm a hip hop artist. Um, that's part of my career path. I'm a speaker, I'm an author, um, and I also am an energy efficiency consultant. You guys didn't know that, huh? Um, they don't let me wear backwards hats though. Um, but through all that, who I am, I am an equipper of people. You know, like my, I feel like I'm called to um, equip, motivate, and inspire emerging leaders. Hence, if I was working at Jiffy Lube, that would be who I am, even while I'm changing, you know, the oil and different things like that. So it's knowing your core, but your career is what's going to give you, um, it's going to give you, it's going to be a reflection of who you are, you know. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, but your major and your career are pieces of the puzzle of your ultimate calling. The same way your personality is, your strengths, your abilities, your quirks, even your flaws, it's all part of this, this, uh, this gumbo pot that is brought together that is your calling of who you are. So don't just think that you're just defined and that's what we, a lot of times we have wrong in our culture is we just define ourselves by what we do and where we work. But what if that gets taken away? Who are you? That's the main thing to remember. Um, and I'm kind of rushing over this, um, but some of you guys are going to find yourself, you don't even, you, you get your major, you, you're a, um, you know, an arts major, but you end up being a, a, you know, a financial person. Just because you're not doing what you majored in doesn't mean that you're not in your calling. A lot of times that's what's going to happen. And a lot of you guys, you're going to have distinct experiences throughout your life. And what that's going to what really what that is, is, is God really making a quilt like, you know, out of the different parts of your life. How many of you guys got like a grandma that quilts or anything like that? And at first it looks ugly. Like why you got polka dots with stripes and then you got orange with gray and you got all these weird colors in combination. But at the end of it, man, she lift that thing up and it's a family heirloom and it's awesome. And that's how your life is going to be. OK. So golden nuggets, just a couple things. I know you guys got to go. Um, oops. Um, so golden nuggets. First thing is know your inherent worth. And I can't stress this enough. Know that you are valuable. You, we live in a culture of scarcity. And what happens in a culture of scarcity is we always feel like we're not enough. Every ad that most ads that you see, it's always telling you what you're not and, and, and what you don't have. But you have to know internally what you have is valuable. Even if you don't exactly know your calling, even if you have the great idea but don't know how to implement it, and even if you're in a position where you're doing what you're called to do but you're like, how do I sustain this? You have to know that what you have is valuable. Even as I was preparing this presentation, the little chatter, you know, we all hear the chatter like you can't do it. Why, why would they listen to you? Why do they need to listen to you? But you have to overcome that and say, no, what I have to give is valuable to this world. So that's one thing is know your inherent worth and that's going to be one of the main things that gets under attack. Um, the next thing is um, we know who we are. You know who you are. Matter of fact, the best person to ask how this microphone works is the manufacturer. So go to know who you are. You have to know who God is. That's crucial. I know it sounds basic and you know, but at, at its core, for you to know who you are, you have to go to the one who made you. Self-discovery is inextricably linked with God discovery. The more that you know about God through a real vital relationship, the more you're going to learn who you are because he's going to reveal it. That's the only way. It's not going to come in your career. It's not even going to come in your major. It's not going to come in your relationship at a full, at, in a full picture. It's going to come from God himself and you having a real relationship where you're able to actually hear and discern his voice. That's going to be uh, uh, critical for you. And um, gosh, see my notes, man. But I think I, I think we covered a lot. I really think we covered a lot. I think I gave you guys some stuff to chew on. <laughs> um, so I, I know a lot of you guys got to go. Um, but what I ask is as you leave, um, there is a little um, survey, if you guys wouldn't mind filling it out. It just asks you like what you thought about today, what you thought can be improved, what you got out of today. 
Um, and also, if you want, if you just want to keep up with some of the things that I'm doing, um, you can give me your name and your email. I promise you I won't spam you. Karen is on my email list. I don't spam her. I maybe, you know, email like it, it's only when when something important comes up. Um, so if you guys wouldn't mind filling those out. Oh, yes, I do have the book. Um, for you guys that are interested, it's called Accuracy, A Guide to Living Skillfully and Successfully in Today's Crazy Times. I have four copies outside um, if, you're, if you're interested, but there's also more available at thinkaccuracy.us. So thank you guys for having me today. Appreciate you.